So we're lucky. Uh, we're sort of uh, living uh, in a time of uh, really rich development of treatments for uh, treatments for epilepsy, uh, ranging from ranging from genetics uh, through small molecules uh, through surgical approaches. Uh, the uh, number of studies that's out there looking at new treatments uh, for, for epilepsy is just amazing. Uh, some of these are pre at preclinical stage, and uh, a large number of them are in stages one and two, and some are just moving into stage three. Uh, so there's a number of small molecules that are very interesting. Uh, there's a uh, potassium channel blocker being developed by a uh, company called Xenon uh, that has had a very successful phase two study, and it's going to be starting phase three studies at some point. Uh, there are... Uh, uh, is uh, uh, a there, there are a number of other medications. Um, there is another uh, benzodiazepine modulator uh, uh, being developed uh, by uh, a company called Cerebel that's uh, also uh, at uh, a relatively fast stage of clinical development. Uh, there is uh, a compound being developed in phase two stage that works very uh, synergistically with uh, levetiracetam, uh, the commonest anti medication that looks very promising. Uh, there is uh, a development of uh, ivermectin for treatment of epilepsy, uh, which is sort of interesting. Um, and there is a large number of other small molecules. So that's a great uh, area of development. The genetics of uh, epilepsy has exploded. And with it now, in the last year or two or three, uh, the genetic approaches to treatment, particularly of the treatment of the genetically uh, defined rare epilepsies, such as Dravet syndrome, uh, such as Lagrange-Lewis Gastel syndrome, tuberous sclerosis, and so on. So we're seeing a revolution of treatment there, uh, and that sort of uh, will be very, very interesting to uh, keep uh, keep an eye on. Uh, and then you've got sort of. Uh, innovative approaches to surgical treatments. You've got the uh, uh, responsive neurostimulation, uh, of course, that's out there. Uh, and uh, there are other uh, treatments being developed. There's one very exciting project where you've got implantation of differentiated uh, inhibitory neurons into, uh, into the hippocampus, into the temporal lobe. Uh, you've got another one where you've got intra uh, 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 fecal uh, injection of uh, a commonly used medication, uh, Valproate, uh, which is very, a very commonly used medication, but does have uh, a number of side effects. And uh, if you uh, inject it intrathecally, uh, you can use much, much lower dose and uh, um, maybe not have those side effects. That uh, is in stage two development also. So there's a large number of uh, drugs that are being developed uh, and a large number of treatment approaches that are being developed, uh, genetic approaches. And then we've sort of got the exciting uh, field of epilepsy prevention, uh, where you've got rough uh, epilepsy is uh, sort of uh, unusual in that in rough, a significant proportion of patients, roughly 20%, it follows uh, an acute event that causes injury to the brain. Uh, head trauma, stroke, infection. So those are the three commonest. And epilepsy takes a little while to develop after these uh, insults. And during that period, when the brain is changing from non-epileptic to epileptic, during the, the epileptogenic process, you've got a window of opportunity where you could use treatment to prevent it. And there's now a, a lot of interest in uh, doing that and uh, some treatments are being uh, looked at. So uh, one step further, not only treating epilepsy, but preventing it. Um, so the, as I say, we're lucky. We've got a very exciting uh, set of developments. And I think the main uh, the, 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 the main takeaway from uh, our talk uh, today would be that there may be a shift in the change uh, of uh, treatment of refractory epilepsy that a significant proportion of patients who previously were previously refractory might respond to this new treatment. There's one other development that, uh, that I haven't talked about, and that's sort of what's called acute rescue therapy. Uh, so... Uh, uh, in the past, if you had a cluster of seizures together, 
really the only uh, rapidly absorbed treatment that you could use was uh, rectally administered diazepam, benzodiazepine. Uh, since about uh, three years, uh, that is no longer the case. Uh, there are two nasally administered treatments. One is midazolam, a benzodiazepine. One is diazepam, another benzodiazepine. That can be used at, uh, at, let's say, the beginning of a seizure to prevent another seizure coming down the line in patients who have clusters of seizures. Well, the development's underway now where you can get uh, the, uh, the benzodiazepine into brain even more rapidly if you inhale it. Uh, uh, the treatment is called staccato alprazolam. Alprazolam is the uh, name of the medication. Staccato is the sort of formulation uh, of in, inhaled uh, medication. And with uh, that treatment is being evaluated for not only prevention of further seizures in somebody who has clusters of seizures, but for abortion of the ongoing seizure. Uh, and down the road, that could lead to a paradigm shift of treatment of epilepsy for those patients who, let's say, are not so refractory. And let's say they have a seizure once every six months. And let's say that the seizure starts with an aura, uh, which is really the uh, initial uh, part of the seizure. And so the patient has a warning that something bad may happen. And if they then have uh, a treatment available that they, in, but that they breathe in and the seizure is aborted and they don't go to the bad seizure, uh, then maybe they might uh, graduate from having daily medication to having uh, medication only when they're uh, at risk for having seizures. So that's another exciting development.